Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this particular screencast is the second in the series of projectile motion and we'll be looking at free body diagrams and resultant force diagrams. Now if you remember in the last screencast at the end of the screencast we were looking at flight path diagrams and this is just number one of the series of four diagrams which you're going to need to understand how to draw for different objects or projectiles. So we're going to start off with free body diagrams because they're a little bit simpler than the other ones. The forces on it acting on a body can be presented with a free body diagram and that's why we use them. And the free body diagram's purpose is to show all the forces acting on the body or the projectile at a specific moment in time and often the examiner will ask you what moment in time, for example, in flight for an object. The forces we're interested in are mainly air resistance and weight. And when you draw them, they both need to originate at the center of mass on your object. The main objects that you will be required to draw for the exam are shuttlecocks and shot puts. However, you may also be asked for a free body diagram for other projectiles or objects such as footballs, javelins, rugby ball, discus. However, these are a little bit more complex because they also generate other forces other than air resistance and weight and we'll need to address these in another screencast. So if we're just talking air resistance and weight, we're looking at shot put and shuttlecocks. So let's start with the shot put. Here is how to draw a free body diagram. First tip, make your diagram as big as you can get it because it shows it's very clear to the examiner. What the examiner is going to mark you on is where you put the lines and where they come from. So if the lines are big and easy to see, then it makes it easy for the examiner to give you the marks. If you draw a tiny diagram, the examiner cannot determine where you've started your line from or how long the lines are. And so it's very important that you do draw a relatively big diagram or as big as you can make it in the space provided on the exam. So draw yourself a circle for a shot put. And the most important thing that you start with is always drawing the direction of travel line. So a little dotted line show which direction the shot put is traveling in. Now for this example, we'll say the examiners ask you for a shot put in flight or mid flight. So that means the shot put has now been thrown. So let's start with the air resistance line. We draw a line from the center of mass opposite to the direction of travel. So you notice my white direction of travel line is going that way. So that way is the shot put is traveling and air resistance runs opposite to the direction of travel. In this case, we have a short or relatively short air resistance line. And the reason for that is because you've got a long weight line. It's a very heavy object. So because the objects might be moving slower than other objects because of its weight, the air resistance line might be quite short. The weight line must also come from the center of mass of the, of the object, so in this case the shot put, and this will be quite long because the shot put's quite heavy. Remember to exaggerate your line, so if you're drawing a longer weight line, make sure it is longer than the air resistance line. Okay, after each line you must put the letters AR for air resistance and W and they must be on the end of the arrow. So it must look exactly like the diagram you have in front of you. So this diagram then shows that weight is the dominant force because it's longer than air resistance and therefore air resistance is small. I would always write that by the side of my diagram. Just in the equation, W is greater than AR. So weight is greater than air resistance. Because if you do have a diagram that isn't very clear, that can also help the examiner to show what you actually meant. All right, so that's your free body diagram, your basic free body diagram. The flight path diagram, as we looked at last screencast, is relatively simple. So we draw the shot put again, and you need to draw a curved line to show the flight path of that shot put. It must have an arrow at the end of the line in terms of the direction of travel. Okay, so we know that weight is the dominant force and we know air resistance is reduced. So therefore it is a parabolic flight path which we met in the last screencast. So all we have to do is draw a nice 
curved line that looks like a parabolic flight path with an arrow at the end of it. You could also draw a direction of travel line underneath to show the shot put is traveling to the right, but that is it for a flight path diagram. So relatively straightforward. So what we now need to do is apply the same principles of what we've just done to those two diagrams to the shuttlecock. So let's have a go. So we draw ourselves a shuttle. Obviously I've used an image, but you might want to draw something very simple. Um, the simpler the better for your diagrams because it's going to save you time in the exam. So it could just be a circle, circular sort of part with a triangle attached to the bottom of it to make it look like a shuttle. So again, we start with direction of travel. The shuttle has just been hit, so this is a shuttle in mid-flight. Now, for those that play badminton, you'll know that when you hit a shuttle, it starts off very fast. Okay, so therefore, the air resistance line is going to be quite long on this particular shuttle because it travels very fast. So therefore, we know increased velocity means increased air resistance. So a long air resistance line with an AR after it. Remember your arrows pointing against the direction of travel. Critical thing here is start the, the A resistance line at the correct center of mass. It's not in the middle of the shuttlecock, it's slightly nearer to the head of the shuttlecock because the head part of the shuttlecock is a bit more plastic and weighted, so therefore there's slightly bigger weight at the front of the shuttlecock, so be careful with that. The weight of a shuttlecock compared to a shot put is a lot lighter, so the weight line is going to be shorter, therefore air resistance is greater than weight. Remember to write that by the side, so AR greater than weight and therefore we have a non-parabolic flight path. It doesn't run in the same flight path as a shot put. This means the flight path diagram is going to be different. We know that air resistance is greater than weight, so therefore we need to draw a non-parabolic flight path. As you hit a shuttle, again for those people who play a bit of badminton, so you hit it, it will travel fast and then it will drop very quickly. So we have a non-parabolic flight path because it doesn't look like the shot put flight path. Okay, so that's flight path diagrams done and free body diagrams done. And remember the examiner can ask you to do other objects as well, but these are the ones that just require air resistance and weight. The final diagram we're gonna look at this screencast is what we call parallelogram of forces. This is also known as a resultant force diagram. In this diagram, we have to think about all the forces acting on the projectile in flight. And the way to do this is as follows. We start off drawing a free body diagram. Okay, so if you're asked to draw a parallelogram of forces, think free body diagram first, so draw that first. So we show air resistance and weight, like we've just been doing. What we then do is we need to add broken parallel lines to the diagram, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. And finally, we draw a diagonal line from the origin of weight and air resistance, which is then labeled resultant force. Please, if you're asked to draw a free body diagram, do not draw a parallel, parallelogram of forces diagram on top of your free body diagram. This is a separate diagram that needs to be drawn on its own. Okay, so if we're doing one of these for a shot, Put. remember the order, we start off drawing the free body diagram. So we draw our shot, we put the direction of travel, we've got air resistance and weight coming from the center of mass. So that's your free body diagram. To make that into a resultant force diagram, we've got to add dotted lines to it. So we start off, we look at the weight line and we draw an exact same size as the weight line but connected to the air resistance line and you draw it in dots and you put an arrow on it, just like that orange line is there. We then look at the air resistance line and we do the same thing to connect the weight to the other line. And this creates a parallelogram, so you can see that shape for those that do maths. However, this is not the line we're really interested in, in terms of what this means, but it must be present on your diagram, so your diagram must look like that. We then finally go from the center of mass to the corner of the two orange lines we've now drawn. And we have to label that line the resultant force. What that means is if this white line is closer to the weight, 
in terms of your blue lines, that means weight is the dominant force. If that white line is closer to the air resistance line, it means air resistance is the dominant force. So in this case, when you look at that diagram, the white line, the white arrow of resultant force is closer to the W in terms of the length and direction than it is to the air resistance. So again, by the side of your diagram, you should always write weight is therefore greater than air resistance or W greater than air resistance. And your whole diagram will look like exactly like I have on the screen plus W greater than air resistance. Let's have a go at the shuttlecock, same principle. Direction of travel line first. Shuttlecock is flying mid-flight, so we know it's the long air resistance line and a short weight line. So that's our free body diagram. However, to make it into a resultant force diagram, we add the dotted lines. So we copy the air resistance line underneath and add it to the weight line in dotted line. We then copy the weight line from the air resistance down to meet the corner again in a dotted line, and then we finally see from the center of mass, we draw our main line, which is labeled resultant force. And in this case, you can see that that white line is now closer to air resistance than it is to weight. And so therefore air resistance is greater than weight. Therefore that is the dominant force. And I, again, I would always write that by the side of that diagram. So air resistance is greater than weight. Okay, if you're confused about how to do any one of those three diagrams, then please go back over the screencast, make sure your notes are clear, and take your time and keep practicing with them. It does take a bit of thought, but when your diagrams are large and clear, the examiner can give you the marks. So make sure you have all the labels and all the lines in the correct places for each type of diagram. Okay, thanks for watching, and if you need any more help, head to the iSpeakPE channel on YouTube, and I'll see you next time.